Hi, my name is Mackenzie. I'm an occupational therapist here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy, and today I'm going to be talking about developing social skills while also being neurodiversity affirming. As an occupational therapist, I work with a lot of different children, many of whom are neurodiverse, and I also work with them on developing their social skills. Something that I wanna emphasize though today is the difference between developing social skills as it's been previously defined and developing pro-social behaviors. I have some definitions, one of which is that the development of social skills is the range of appropriate behaviors for interacting and connecting with others, or that social skills contribute to socialization as a whole, which is the process of learning the standards and expectations of a specific culture. Now, these definitions, when I came across them, felt quite narrow and a little suffocating, especially for my friends that have trouble with typical social norms that you might expect based on the society and culture that we live in. And I started to think a little bit more on what we might be expecting from our kids and from the people around us when it comes to social interactions, and that what we're really trying to do is develop pro-social behaviors, things like empathy, sympathy, kindness, cooperation, problem solving, engaging with another in a positive way that overall benefits ourselves, the other person and society as a whole, that isn't dependent on social norms or our culture. And that's what I wanted to focus on today because our neurodiverse children and individuals deserve to feel like they can connect with others in a meaningful way and build relationships without feeling like there's a pressure to act in a certain way in order to do that. Another definition that I found that could be more helpful is that social emotional development can be defined as emerging behaviors that are identified by children's use of secure attachments with their caregivers and peers that manifest in positive relationships, increasing self-regulation, confidence, curiosity, motivation, and communication along with social competence. That definition to me sounds so much more accurate to what we're trying to accomplish with our kids. A lot of times we're not trying to develop social skills solely so that they can interact appropriately at a dinner party or behave when we go to the movies, even though we would love for that to happen too. What we really want is for them to be able to connect with us as caregivers, for them to connect with their families, for them to connect with their friends and the world around them and build those meaningful relationships. Something that I wanted to touch on though, is the components of building that. I mentioned in the definition that a key part of that is positive attachment. Good attachment with a caregiver or with peers is crucial to the development of social skills. Attachment is exactly what it sounds like, how attached we are to a caregiver. And when we have that secure attachment, we know that there is a trusted base of support that you'll see a lot of times in toddlers, they'll wander off, they're interested in something, and anytime something kind of seems a little fishy, they come running back to their parent for support because they know that my parent is here, they're my strong base of support, and if their parent says, hmm, that's all right, it, it was just a falling leaf that scared you on the playground, we can keep playing, then the child knows, oh, this person that I trust is telling me that the situation is okay and I can go out and explore more. And that way they're able to go back out, jump into the sandbox, play with peers instead of withdrawing because of fear. That secure attachment is so important. In addition to that secure attachment being so important, we also need to work on developing self-regulation. A lot of times the difficulties that we face with children for that said dinner party that I mentioned or going to the movie theaters isn't social skills, but rather their underlying self-regulation. Are they able to identify the emotions they're feeling, manage them in an appropriate way for the setting they're in, and then interact with others because they've managed those emotions? I, we have many other videos, one of which I've done on the emotional regulation component of child development, and that is essential for social skills. If we are not able to identify how we feel and manage it, then we certainly can't interact with others and engage with others. When we're at the movie theater, if we're dysregulated, we start to have those behaviors that might not be seen as socially acceptable. And what we're really frustrated with is potentially a child's inability to remain calm and engaged in a community setting rather than a lack of social skills. 
Rather, we want to develop those pro-social skills that I'll emphasize again are a child showing empathy to another, cooperating with another kid while they're playing, showing sympathy to someone who's sad even if they don't know why they're sad, being caring or kind, knowing how to take turns and share. All of these, you might be thinking, my child really struggles with those. What am I supposed to do? I also want to emphasize that teaching a child social skills, especially pro-social behavior, is essentially like teaching a child how to be a human, how to connect with others, how to show them care. And it's going to take a lot of time, consistency and boundaries and your representation to them of what social skills looks like and modeling. Their biggest teacher is their primary caregiver. So you will have the most important influence on your child's life, not only from the beginning, but throughout. And it's important to take that time when you see an opportunity for them to learn how to interact with others that you facilitate conflict resolution, showing them how to care for another person, cooperate with them, think about their perspective, what are they feeling, to empathize, to make a choice that allows them to build those relationships and those pro-social pro skills when they might be struggling as a young child to know how do I operate in this big wide world. I hope that these thoughts and these tips and this information was helpful to you and that it allows you to help the children in your life, whether they are neurodiverse or not, to create meaningful relationships and not feel so bogged down by societal expectations for social interaction, but rather to refocus on the true importance of connecting with another individual and the role it plays in our lives and how to facilitate that in our kids. Thank you.